Okay, in this model, I'm going to show you how to set up a problem to analyze the transient pumping of a well at the center of a circular aquifer. So this thin disk here is the aquifer and the well's at the center. And to begin setting up this problem, we'll, I've started to set it up, so we'll take a look at some of the things that I've done. I imported a file that had these constants in it. Um, and these will just be used to specify the uh, parameters in the, in the problem. Um, I also uh, included a variable that I'm calling uh, hjacob50 and this functions like a, um, uh, like a function uh, and it has this expression here. This is the Jacob solution from groundwater hydrology and we can see what that is here. The Jacob solution is written out and this is the um, drawdown or the uh, fluid pressure in an aquifer. The pumping rate at the well is Q. Uh, the aquifer properties, hydraulic conductivity and thickness are K and B. And then there's uh, hydraulic conductivity again. This is the specific storage of the aquifer time and the radial distance of the observation point. So we measure the hydraulic head at that radial distance. So this solution applies to the hydraulic head in the vicinity of a well after the well has been pumping for a moderate amount of time. Right at the beginning, when the well first starts to be pumped, this solution does not apply. So we'll use this solution to verify the numerical solution after we've been pumping for a while. And we'll see where that comes into play when we compare the solution to the, when we compare this uh, equation to the numerical solution. Okay, um, so that's the Jacob solution. The geometry is set up using a cylinder of a thousand meter radius and 20 meters thick and that's the cylinder here. The well itself is a polygon. Uh, it's just a line. You can see it right there at the center. The uh, top of the, the top surface of this disk has been uh, hidden so you can see it and it's specified here as a polygon that uh, occurs between two points. So each one of those points is given as a combination of X, Y, and Z. So the first point is 0, 0, 0. The second point is 0, 0, 20. And so we can make a polygon that has however many points we want that will be connected uh, using this approach by putting in the um, points as vectors. Okay, to specify the physics, we've used Darcy's law. These are the defaults. And to make this a transient problem, we need to go and select the storage model from the subdomain uh, selections here. And while we're at it, we'll select a boundary condition. These are the, the possible boundary conditions for this problem. So we'll select the hydraulic head boundary condition. And that'll be the outside of the model. And we'll also select an edge. Uh, and we'll use a mass flux for the edge. That, that will be the well. Um, this this feature here. Okay, so now we have to set up the storage model. This is where we specify the properties of the problem. Density and viscosity, I think, are straightforward. The matrix property, we're going to specify using hydraulic conductivity, so we need to switch that over. And the hydraulic conductivity I have here is a constant that I call K. Uh, porosity really for this problem is just a nominal value it shouldn't matter but I'm going to use 0.1 and for the storage model uh, the approach that we'll use is to just specify a specific storage and so we make a user defined value and I called specific storage s sub s uh, just uppercase lowercase s 
But now we need to be careful here because specific storage is defined using two different unit sets. This is uh, defining it in terms of 1 over pressure. But the constant that we use here has SS in terms of, um, well, it says 1 over pressure, but that is that 1 times 10 to the minus 5. That should be uh, 1 over meters. It's essentially 1 over pressure head. And that's an appropriate value for a specific storage of a sand uh, in units of 1 over meters. So what we need to do if we use SS here is we have to convert it. And so what we'll do is divide it by 9800. This is the unit weight of water. And that'll be in units of 9800 um, pascals per meter. And so that's what we'll use to convert SS, which is in units of per meter, to these units, which are the ones we need. So hydraulic head is going to be zero around the edge of the model. And we'll set that up. The mass flux, to set this up, we need to select this point, um, like so. And, um, and then we need to write in the mass flux. Well. We've only specified the volumetric flux in the constant, so we need to convert the volumetric flux to a mass flux. And we do that by um, multiplying the, actually Q is a volumetric flow rate. And so the conversion is volumetric flow rate times the density of the fluid, that, which is what we call rho, uh, in the constants. And that's something that we've specified. And then we also divide that by the uh, thickness of the aquifer. So that's the conversion that gives us, um, uh, that goes from a volumetric flow rate coming out of the well to a mass flux in these units. Okay, so we set these terms up, and I've already done that. And so we're ready to check out the mesh. So. I'm just going to use the default settings for the mesh, see what that gives us. So it's a uniform mesh over the whole domain. And you can see we're really only having it be one element thick. Um, so this is not really an optimal mesh for this problem because the action is going to happen right here around the well. So an optimal mesh would have would be dense around the well and then be sparser here. But for now, we'll just go ahead and use this mesh and see how well it does. If we have problems with the verification, then we might consider uh, refining the mesh. So we're going to go and run this now. And what we need to do before we run it is set up the time of the run. So I'm going to run this for uh, 10 to the 7th seconds. So I'll actually what I need to do is first change the number of values uh, as the entry method. And so then we'll have it start at 0, the simulation will start at 0, and it will end at 1 e to the 7th seconds. And let's have 50 values. And so we'll use replace to change the times up here. And so that should be all that we need to do to the study. And let's go ahead and run that. Huh. OK, looks like I forgot to fill in this part. Oh, I see. So here's something that is an easy mistake to make. I went into the storage model, and I filled in all of these um, entries, but I forgot to select the subdomain. So we've got to make sure that we do that. And let's go and that also applies to all of the, um, the boundary conditions as well. So we still have a problem. Let me see. Ah, OK. So in this version, I did not, in fact, have a variable called rho. So we'll just add one here. So rho is the fluid density, 
and so it's uh, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. All right. Okay, so that looks good. Let's try this study again. So we go here and we run it. So it's running. Looks like we should have some results. Okay, so we can see the well and if we go to here to the end of the simulation, we see that we have some uh, pressure change. This is just the default plot that we get as a result of running this. And so the important plot that we'll generate here is a measurement of the hydraulic head 50 meters away from the pumping well. So over here someplace. And that will be what we calculated up here with this Jacob solution. It's 50 meters away because r squared is calculated right here as 50 squared. So we'll make the comparison using this 1D plot group. And I generated two graphs that where they're, they're point graphs. So they're measurements of a variable at a point as a function of time. And in the first one here, it's just this dependent variable, uh, capital H for hydraulic head. The second one is the uh, H Jacob 50. And the way I set this plot group up is I made the, um, well, let me go up here. I, I, uh, when I set this up initially, I created in the data set uh, node a, a cut point 3D. So this point is at x equals 50, y equals 0, and z equals 10. So that's a radial distance of 50 meters right at the center of the um, layer. And then when I set up this plot group, I have the data set cut point 3D1. And in each one of these graphs that are part of the group, I use a data set from the parent. So that will ensure that both of these are using the same information. And so here's H uh, Jacob 50. It's plotted. And you can see two lines on here. They're quite thin. So let me just uh, make them a bit thicker so they're easier to see. The analytical solution is green. And the um, numerical solution here is blue. And so they look quite similar here. They are quite similar. So they're, these solutions are quite close. We can compare them uh, a little bit, at least differently, perhaps, perhaps better, using a log scale here. And so with a log scale, what we see is that this is the, the green here is the analytical, and the blue is the numerical. And we can see that at early times, there are some differences. But those differences decrease with time. And here, at later times, they are um, really quite close. They're indistinguishable now that we made the lines a little bit thicker. OK, so from a verification perspective, this is the behavior of this particular analytical solution. So this is, I think, a pretty good case where we can verify that the, this solution, this numerical solution, is working um, pretty well. Now, what we would do next is calculate the uh, relative error of these two solutions and see just how well it is doing. So that's something that I'll leave for you to do. Uh, another thing, though, that we can do with this solution is use it for numerical experiments. And numerical experiments are, are things that you would do to uh, evaluate how uh, usually it's how parameter values or some aspect of the solution affects the results. And so a straightforward numerical experiment here would be to ask yourself the question, well, what is the effect of hydraulic conductivity on this curve, the, the hydraulic head change in the vicinity of the well? 
And so one way to address that would be to conduct a numerical experiment where you run the solution several times uh, use it and just change the hydraulic connectivity. So we've set the model up nicely to do this because we have a constant here that's uh, k. This is the hydraulic connectivity. And every place that hydraulic connectivity has appeared in the model, like in the storage model, we use this variable name k. And it also appears here in the Jacob solution, right there and right there. So if we want to change it, we change it here, and it's changed everywhere in the model. So to do our experiment, we can change it. Uh, well, what we should do is first record the results that we have here. And I would do that by pressing this and copying the results to the, um, to the uh, clipboard. And I've made some modifications here from the defaults. I've reduced this uh, number. I believe the default is 800. So I've reduced that to 450. That makes the graph smaller, but the fonts stay about the same size. So it ends up giving you a graph with the fonts being relatively larger. And so they're easier to read. And I also checked this box. And uh, that will create a legend and axis that just makes the um, plot a little bit easier to read. And I also boosted the plot size. So we hit OK. We can then uh, plot this over in Word. And I'll go over here and we'll take a look. This is that plot transferred over to Word. And so I labeled it here uh, with the value of hydraulic connectivity. And then we can go back here to the analysis and go up to the constants, change the value of the constant here, uh, rerun it, and copy the result uh, back over to these uh, places on this Word document. And so I've done that. And here's what you get. Um, this is the analysis we just did. If we reduce the hydraulic connectivity by a factor of 10, we get uh, this green curve and this blue curve. And here's what you get if you increase the hydraulic connectivity. Well, on first first cut, it looks like the blue curves are staying the same. But that's not really true. Because even though the time span here, even though this scale stays the same, this scale, this span here is much larger than this one. This is going from uh, 0.3 to 1.8. This is minus 6 to 9. So this covers a much larger span. And so this is a much steeper slope on this semi-log plot. Um, and if we reduce k, this span is much less than this one. So this is a much shallower slope. So that's one change. The other change that we see is in the numerical results. And when we decrease k, the numerical results are much further from the analytical solution than they are for this value of k. And the reason for that is that we recognized here in this solution that these two, uh, that the numerical solution differed from the analytical one because the analytical one really wasn't intended to work at early time. Well, when we reduce k, the the time that is let's say quote early takes much longer so this is really at early time for the system that has a lower hydraulic connectivity basically we can think of the time as being the time that's required for the pressure to propagate away from the well and because k is much less here it takes longer and so we have this uh, period here when the solutions are quite different. But you can see as we go out in time, they converge. And here at late time, they still are really quite similar. Well, if we follow that now to a k that where it's, um, it's 10 times greater than this k, we can see at early times, these solutions are really um, quite similar, much more so than either of these two. And that's really for the same reason 
uh, when k is larger the pressure propagates out more quickly and the system behaves as if it's uh, progressed later in time uh, by the time we get to this part of the plot. We also see this effect here where the numerical solution starts to flatten out. What's happening here is the k is high enough so by this time in the simulation the um, the pressure disturbance that the well has created has propagated out and interacted with the boundaries. So this is really an effect of the one kilometer boundary that we've put on the numerical model which doesn't which isn't included in the analytical solution. The analytical solution the solution assumes that the aquifer is of infinite extent. So just by doing a simple experiment like this where we have these three different solutions we can learn uh, quite a bit about the behavior of this system uh, by comparing them and trying to understand what uh, causes the differences in these uh, 